Welcome back everyone to our part 3 of our Lumion tutorial series. Uh, so today I'll be covering lighting and a few settings that you probably missed out in the last two parts. If you have not checked out the last Lumion parts I highly recommend beginners to check that out before jumping into this one and so that you are in a proper order following the tutorial series. Anyway, let's get into it. And for those, if you are new to my channel, if you like my content, then please do like, share, and subscribe in order to keep me motivated. And to all my subscribers, I love y'all. Thank you. So before I jump into the lighting bit and other settings, let me just show you what I did with the materials over here. Uh, so, if you go into the materials tab and have a look at my materials, I basically put that as a black, selected a plastic material from the material library, color that black completely, give it a bit of edge and no weathering there. And it's not jet black by the way, it's set somewhere there with a high gloss and low reflectivity that's what I did for the marble it's a standard material that I used directly from SketchUp itself and with a high gloss again a bit of reflectivity and then you've got the wooden again this is uh, another SketchUp material actually VA materials to be honest these are and of course the the cladding over here was again from VA and I placed a few objects from the Lumion library, interior library itself. So yeah, you can you can do that too. It's it's not that hard doing that. And I selected a glass material and colored that black, give it a bit of reflection, and reduce the transparency. That's it really. That that that's all was done here and nothing else. Now onto the main part. So if you go into the content library under the lighting tab, you have the moment you switch that on you will have a list of IES lights uh, you can select from these lists or you can place your own custom IES lights but th th but this option is only available for Lumion 11 users I believe custom IES lights so if you've got custom IES lights files you can load it directly into Lumion nowadays first up you've got lock object and make it unselectable so if you're finalized everything it's good to lock your objects if you don't want it to be selectable then you've got you can set this you can set two different lights into one group so you can make them you can add selection to a group that's what this button is for then you can set the direction the target of the light so that's that for you then you've got the layer tab. you can place the lights under a different layer you can create a layer by clicking on this add layer button over here and then selecting that layer from this drop down list here so that's that color is obviously the color of the light and then the brightness of the light then you've got the cone angle of the light then you've got light source light source basically shows you uh, the light i use that whenever required for now i'm not using that yeah then you've got night activa night activation night activation basically helps you uh, it'll, it'll tell Lumion to detect whether it's a daylight scene or a night scene and it'll switch on accordingly but I turn that off generally in order to get more control and not leave it to the software then you've got shadows I generally set it to high shadows because it casts proper shadows when it's set to high do not use dynamic un unless you are animating something so I recommend just just go with the high settings really so that's that in order to deselect the light you can just click on this button over here deselect all so it will deselect the lights for the lights under the cabinets I used a plain light a simple plain light with a bit of orange tint so these are the values there is no night act activation I have switched on the light source and that's it really so that's that and if you if you look at the uh, this side you'll probably see there's an arrow like that show advanced options so in the under the advanced options you've got quite a bit of settings actually so what are they let me just go through those settings for you 
if you click on yeah if you click on any any objects it will have these set of settings advanced settings so the first one is replace selection for example you want to replace this light i don't like it for example i can change it to that so you can directly replace your light without having to delete this and placing another light there wasting time so you can directly replace your lights there then the next one is focus on selection clicking that will directly take you to the object selected find selected objects in library it is self explanatory it's self explanatory so if you find that you'll find that it'll just select the object in library directly so that's that and then next up is select all objects in the same category so the moment you do that it'll select all the ob all the lights basically because it's under the light category so deselect that and just select that again then you've got randomized position that will randomize the position of all the lights then it'll again randomize rotation it'll randomize rotation of all the lights this will randomize the size of the lights then you can reset the size and the rotation this is place on landscape if you want to place if you if you if you've just placed something here and you want to let me just show you that quickly uh let's go to decoration let's go to that for example i've placed that there if i click on place on landscape it basically places it directly on the slab without me having to check it whether it's placed on the slab or not then you've got confirm to landscape this is very useful generally when you're placing trees or imported objects I, clicking on that will basically put the object or the imported model as per the landscape uh, as per the landscape terrain so if it's a flat surface it will directly place it on that accordingly if it's a I believe uh, edge surface I think it should yeah it'll again because it's detecting that flat surface there but if you I think place it somewhere there I think that will probably yeah so it will confirm according to the landscape so right now I haven't uh, I don't have a, a slope surface but it will definitely do it as per the landscape terrain so that's that so these are your settings really and you've got nothing else and that's it so this is your lighting bit I mean there's not much in the lighting bit all you have to do is experiment with the values of your lights that's what will matter in your final renders the other th type of lighting is your omni lights and its values so omni lights let me just show you that uh, first off you've got the light fill under the omni light uh, that's basically wherever you place that light fill it lights up that particular object be it uh, be it a lumion object or be it an imported object it'll basically light up that particular object that's what uh, omni lights are used for actually you can place it there and then clicking on that you can adjust the brightness as required there you go it will light up the object and then you've got the fall off of course you've got the night act activation I generally leave that off then you've got the fall off option fall off basically it reduces the spread of the brightness of the light so no matter what let's turn that up there increase I mean reducing the fall off look at that the light uh, brightness spread increases and the moment you increase fall off you'll see that happening so that's light fill after that you can replace that with the other omni lights then you've got uh, these omni light blue omni lights green red and white omni light so the moment you select that it's the same option there uh, for the omni lights if you like that it's got the brightness factor except it does not light up the object it lights up the room these omni lights can be used to light up your you know night scenes that's what i use them for i use the omni lights to uh, light up my night renders basically be it a bedroom be it a living room you can use these omni lights to light those up and use the follow factor to uh, dictate the spread of the light you can use that so it, be, it, it it comes in handy and again these don't cast shadows in up till lumion level I think from Lumion 11.5 these lights cast shadows so remember that and use them wisely so that's it really and the lights there's not much with the light settings of here like other softwares uh, there's not much to play around with 
and probably the newer version of Lumion has more settings in lights but as of now this is it really and then I went directly into the photo mode had my photo mode uh, set, up, set up the camera and stuff and yeah did a final render of that so that's that's that and go ahead and place some lights there and yeah I'll get back to you so before I end the video I'd like to mention that I'll be leaving this file in our uh, Facebook group DWorks 3D Club if you have not joined that club it's a private group please ask me uh, to join there and in order to join that group you will have to subscribe to my youtube channel and get access to all the 3d materials settings and things like that because i'll be leaving this lumion file in that group for you to try out and it'll be it'll be only inside that group so i'll leave the link in the description below uh, so yeah ask me to join the group there so just make sure you subscribe send me a screenshot and i'll approve i'll approve your joining there so that you can download this file and give it a try yourself so i'm going to leave the entire lumion file lumion 11 file itself and i'm sorry to the people if you do not have lumion 11 you should probably uh, get that and then give it a try and i'll leave the lumion settings as well over there so yeah go ahead uh, hit that subscribe button and yeah hit the like button and support me thank you Thank you all for watching this video. If you did enjoy the video then please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with my future uploads.